started. My name is Ariana Chaiwaranon and I'm the Dumbarton Oaks Humanities Fellow here at the gallery. So I teach in education. And tonight we're celebrating women who revolutionized art. This room we're standing in is the Diverse Modernisms Gallery, so it showcases pieces from our permanent collection, from artists who are under-exhibited, and from diverse backgrounds working in America in the mid-20th century. Lisette Modell was an Austro-Hungarian artist born in 1901, and she immigrated to New York City from Paris with her husband, Epsa Modell, in 1938. Epsa Modell was a constructivist painter, and here you can see a painting he made around 1955 called American City 21. And it showcases some of those ideas of geometry and the effects of industrialization that are showcased in constructivist painting. Before we get further, I want to ask you all to take a look at this image and tell me what you see. I'd love to hear some of your contributions. It can be kind of hard to see, the image is kind of reflective. Those of you in the back, feel free to cycle up and take a close look if you want. Buildings. We see some buildings in the back here, right? Some yeah. people. Faces right here. Yeah, like a man profile, like, or a type of profile a out of the of art. Like, there's a frame and then there's like a profile. Right, so we're seeing a frame right here and then the profile of a figure over here. Right. Picasso, yeah? The painting? The painting looks like the style of Picasso. In fact, it is a Picasso drawing and I'm going to show you that right here. <laughs> this is a Picasso drawing, pastel, um, called Women with Two Hats. Anything else we're noticing before we get into this picture more? It looks kind of layered. It looks layered. We see many different layers here. So Modell is capturing actually a reflection of this piece in a window with the city outside. When Modell first immigrated to the States, she called America, quote, the country par excellence of making images of everybody and everything. So here we have this kind of cult of image making collapsed into one image. We have Pablo Picasso's women with two hats reflected in the window of a department store, Bergdorf Goodman. And that is on 57th and 5th Avenue, three blocks away from MoMA. Here we have a mannequin reflected, which is a form that's used and crafted to capture your attention and sell you something. So high art and brand name art is being used to sell brand name clothes. Modell is kind of collapsing these cults of image making into one um, picture plane on the surface of this window and in the photograph itself. In reflecting on the American obsession with image making, Modell said, glamour, the image of our image, that is my project. The archaic definition of glamour is enchantment or magic. Today we use glamour to talk about a kind of beauty or allure and kind of sexiness. In history, the beauty of women has been mistrusted. It's often been aligned with this idea of deception and short-circuiting rationality. Similarly, in art history, the illusionistic picture plane of a painting or drawing has been talked about as a kind of deceptive thing, something almost magical. And so here we have this kind of problematic notion of glamour layered and amplified through the layering of this image with the kind of female figures who are mediated by Picasso's drawing and then exhibited in this department store window and then finally captured through the eye of the camera. So the final effect is these abstracted, idealized, and distorted forms that evoke femininity but are actually quite far removed from the bodies of real women. So what about the body of Lisette Modell, the photographer? Where do you think she's standing as she makes this picture? Yeah. 
it's almost a trick question because art historians don't know. So what are your guesses? <laughs> Is she in the store looking out? So she might be in the store looking out. And what makes you say that? Well, because you can see the buildings outside. Right, so the buildings are outside and then the reflection is behind her. So she's standing inside the department store. And it's kind of hard to tell where she's standing because there are so many layers um, of images happening here and of space. Um, for this reason, art historians think that some of her images were produced by double exposure, where you would actually collapse two images into one picture plane. I think that this one, like most of her photographs, is a single shot photo, but it is kind of hard to not get your reflection caught in the reflection when you're taking a picture. But she's using a Rolly Flex camera. You can see her contemporary, Vivian Meyer, making a self-portrait using the same camera. So she holds it at waist height. And holding the camera at this oblique angle, Lisette Modell was similarly able to capture her subjects unseen and kind of snipe images of them, as in her series called Running Legs, where she captures passerby in New York City. So, like her subjects, who are these kind of ephemeral, spectral characters, Lisette Modell herself is almost a specter. Even we, the viewers, aren't safe from this kind of fugitive status of the figure in this photograph. The surface of the uh, paper is very shiny, and in certain lights, it actually almost acts like a mirror. This is produced through a process called ferrotyping, where the photographic print is put face down onto a kind of metal plate while it's drying, so the emulsion is very shiny when you take it off. Lisette Modell thought of the printing process as an almost kind of art in and of itself and made radical decisions in the darkroom, including cropping. So this decision to include our reflections in the series of reflections might be one of those decisions. The curator, Diana Edkins, said of Modell's work, it has, quote, an elusive quality difficult for the photographer to obtain and for the viewer to define and grasp. Mostly it is a suggestion rather than something undeniably there and maybe even sublime. So we see this kind of sense of an elusiveness in the fact that we don't have any actually embodied women in this picture. I would like you all to contrast that elusive quality to this photograph, taken by Lisette Modell during the same time period between 1939 and 1941. What are some contrasts you see between this image and that idea of elusiveness, or this photograph here? We have one woman. A real woman. A real woman, yes. She is real. She is unapologetically there. <laughs> she is unapologetically there. She is insistently present, right? Anything else? Enjoying herself. She's enjoying herself. She's not coyly kind of turning away from you like these women are, right? She is there. Great. So we have one real woman insistently present and having a good time. Lisette Modell took this image of a quote, Coney Island bather, as it's called, as her first assignment for Harper's Bazaar magazine, which she worked for between 1941 and 1955. And in 1979, thinking back to this sitter, she recalled that the woman called out to her, lady, take a picture of me. <laughs> and when the other people on the beach started to laugh at this woman, she laughed at them and said, you stupid people, have you never seen a fat woman? <laughs> so unlike Modell's kind of mask-like mannequins and ephemeral legs passing on the street, this woman stands her ground and takes up space. Modell's longtime friend and fellow photographer, Bernice Abbott, whose work you can see closest to us on this adjacent wall over here, said that the photograph that 
is called Modell's quote, fat woman, is a misreading. What Modell means to say is this person is vital and strong, be she or he, thin or fat. That is a strong contrast to the kind of caption that this image was published with, which was, Coney Island today, the bathing paradise of billions, where fun is still on a gigantic scale. <laughs> Instead, we have a reading of this woman by Modell's close friend as a person, a human being who is present and joyful in her presence. And in that joy, gives us permission to take up space in our own bodies. Abbott said in the introduction to the first book published on Modell, one of the first reactions when looking at Modell's pictures is that they make you feel good. You recognize them as real because real people express a bit of the universal humanity in all of us. Contrast that with that idea of the elusiveness that we heard earlier. So in an age when we're bombarded with images that are kind of pressuring us, especially women, to take up impossibly small amounts of space, Lisette Modell reminds us of the absurdity and superficiality of those pressures in the face of the joy of embodiment. Modell herself says, we are surrounded by thousands of images everywhere. She makes this comment in 1984. Most of these are invisible to us because we are blinded by routine. By pointing the lens at something, I am asking a question. And the photograph is sometimes the answer. Thank you all so much for your time and I'll be around for questions if you have.